Hey there fellow time travelers and welcome back to Retro Renaissance. Today we're setting our dials to the era of one hit wonders from the 1990s. Now I want to define what I mean by one hit wonders because I've seen those comments. Some of the artists mentioned may have charted with other songs. However, the songs that I've listed are what they are known for by the most. But I digress. So now let's embark on the 90s with lyrics that made us go, wait, what? Let's crank up the volume with some Soul Asylum's Runaway Train. Released in 1992, this alt-rock anthem took us on an emotional journey. Its powerful lyrics and the soulful voice of lead singer Dave Pirner made Runaway Train a chart-topping success. Now who else can still feel the chills when that guitar kicks in? Seems like it should be guessing somewhere. It's a runaway hit that never lost its track. Runaway Train gained significant popularity and commercial success reaching the top of the charts in several countries. The song's lyrics are often interpreted as addressing themes of loneliness, despair, and the search for connection. The music video for Runaway Train further emphasized these themes by featuring images and information about missing children. The video's powerful message helped raise awareness about the plight of missing children and led to the discovery of some of the individuals. I was listening to a lot of, you know, Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen and things like that that I was like, oh man, I need to try some other angles. So. Overall, Runaway Train remains one of Soul Asylum's most well-known and successful songs, earning the band a Grammy Award for Best Rock Song in 1994. It continues to be remembered as a poignant, and socially impactful piece of 1990s alternative rock music. Like a madman laughing at the rain, a little out of touch, little insane. It's just easier than dealing with the pain. Runaway train, never going back. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. Now get ready to jump to the beats of House of Pain's Jump Around. Released in 1992, this hip-hop anthem not only made us want to jump around, but also became a party essential. And I don't know about you, but when someone says jump around, this is the song that permanently is stuck in my head. It has an infectious energy and memorable chorus. House of Pain left an indelible mark on the 90s, and admitted every time you hear that horn sample, you can't help but start bouncing. Jump Around is best known for its energetic and catchy chorus, along with its infectious beat. The song's lyrics express a celebratory and defiant attitude, encouraging people to jump around and have a good time. And that prominent horn sample is taken from the track Harlem Shuffle by Bob and Earl. The song became a massive commercial success, reaching the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. It's often associated with sporting events and has been featured in numerous movies and TV shows and commercials. Its enduring popularity has made it a classic in the hip-hop genre. Now let's savor the sweet sounds of Sixpence, None the Richer, and Kiss Me, down by that bearded barley. This dreamy track from 1998 captured the hearts of many with its romantic lyrics and Lee Nash's angelic vocals. And if you like these vocals, I encourage you to check out the duet she did with Mark Martell. And then I open up and see a person falling here is me. A different 
way to be. It's pretty amazing. Now, if you were a teen in the late 90s, chances are this song played during a slow dance or two at school. It's the perfect blend of nostalgia and innocent romance. Kiss Me is characterized by its melodic and pop-oriented sound, featuring the sweet and distinctive vocals of the lead singer. The lyrics convey a romantic theme, describing the anticipation and excitement of a kiss. The song gained widespread popularity and achieved mainstream success, reaching the top of the charts in multiple countries including the United States and the United Kingdom. The song's success was further propelled by its inclusion in the soundtrack of the teen romantic comedy, She's All That. Swing, swing, swing the spinning step You wear those shoes and I will wear that dress oh. which was released in 1999. The exposure from the film helped the song Kiss Me become a prominent part of pop culture during the late 1990s. Despite being their most commercially successful single, Six Pence None the Richer faced challenges and eventually went on a hiatus in the early 2000s. Although the band has had sporadic reunions and continues to be remembered for Kiss Me, it never quite achieved the same success. Next up we have Lou Bega with Mambo Number no. 5. You know what song that is, the song that goes a little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side, a little bit of Rita's all I need, a little bit of Tina. So we're gonna mambo our way into the late 90s with Lou Bega and Mambo Number no. 5. And this was an international sensation, it brought Mambo back into the mainstream, and you couldn't escape the catchy refrain. A little bit of Mary all night long. A little bit of Jessica, here I am. A little bit of you makes me your man. Lou Vegas' playful delivery and the irresistible beat turned every dance floor into a mambo party. I mean, who couldn't resist counting along with the ladies in the song? It reached the top of the charts in numerous countries, including the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. The song's lyrics list names of several women, each followed by the refrain. The playful and infectious nature of this song contributed to its widespread appeal. The track's success was not only due to its catchy tune, but also because of its clever use of a sample from the 1949 instrumental mambo song, Mambo No. 5. and Lou Vegas gave it a modern interpretation and brought a fresh contemporary feel to the classic Mambo sound. While Mambo No. 5 propelled Lou Vega to international stardom, subsequent releases did not achieve the same level of success. Nevertheless, the song remains a nostalgic and iconic piece of the late 1990s pop music. Now we're going to talk about one of the most annoying songs ever made, and also one of the biggest songs ever made. We're going to lasso our way back to 1992 with Miley Cyrus's dad, known as Billy Ray Cyrus, and his unforgettable achy breaky heart. Oh, you can tell my eyes to watch out for my mind. It might be walking out on me today. Don't tell my heart, my achy breaky heart. I just don't think you'd understand. Love it, or pretend you've never line danced to it, this song definitely left its mark in the 1990s and on the country scene. It became the anthem for cowboy boot-wearing line dancing enthusiasts worldwide. And yes, I might have bought a cowboy hat or wore some cowboy boots, but we don't need to talk about that phase. The song's popularity was fueled in part by its catchy chorus, simple lyrics, and line dancing that accompanied it. The song's chorus features the famous line, Don't tell my heart. Just don't think you'd understand. 
It's the upbeat and twangy nature of the song that appealed to the wide audience and helped it cross over into mainstream pop. And they may have made us dance to this in school. I'm not sure why they had square dancing or dancing in school as a requirement, but we did. Billy Ray, with his distinctive mullet, became a recognizable icon in the country music scene. It propelled him to fame and contributed to the success of his debut album, which also went on to become a best-selling record. Despite some criticism and controversy within the country music community at the time for its perceived simplicity, Achy Breaky Heart remains one of the most well-known country songs of the 90s. Billy Ray Cyrus continued his career in the music industry and achieved further success, and much later gained international fame in 2010 for his collaboration with rapper Little Nas X on the hit song Old Town Road. Don't tell my heart So what's up? That's the song we're talking about. It's a song by the American rock band Four Non Blondes. It was released in 1992 as the lead single from their debut album, Bigger, Better, Faster, More. The song became the band's most successful and recognizable track. The Four Non Blondes were a rock band consisting of Linda Perry on vocals, Roger Roca on guitar, Krista Hillhouse on bass, and Don Richardson on drums. You had neon scrunchies, flannel shirts, and the sound of Linda Perry belting it out. And while the lyrics Into a times when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out what's in my head. And I, I am feeling a little peculiar. Maybe a little confusing. They were a whole lot of fun. It's the perfect time machine teleporting us back to an era when grunge was king and the more the better when it came to flannel. On a serious note, the song's lyrics touch upon themes of self-discovery, questioning life's purpose, and seeking a deeper meaning. Its popularity was further boosted by the music video, which received heavy rotation on music television channels. What's Up remains a staple of 1990s alternative rock and is often remembered for its distinctive sound and Perry's soulful vocal delivery. Despite their brief time in the spotlight, I say in concert with uh, when you were with Four Non Blondes, but you had success with that band and yep. you walked away from it. Yes, I did. Why was that? I left because I wanted to basically do something different. Um, Four Non Blondes wanted to continue to do basically the same record again. You've and got to uh, be open to new kinds of things. And Linda Perry went on to have a successful career as a songwriter and producer, working with various artists across genres. While the Four Non Blondes disbanded in 1994, What's Up continues to be a nostalgic favorite for fans of 1990s and rock music. In I'm gone, you'll need love to light the shadows on your face. Next, we're going to talk about a band with a singer that doesn't look like you might expect. Wherever You Will Go is a song by the American rock band The Calling. The Calling was formed by Alex Band on vocals and Aaron Kamen on guitar and Wherever You Will Go was featured on their debut album Camino Palmero. Now this song was technically released in 2001, but was performed and written and completed in the late 1990s. This masterpiece has the power to make you swoon and contemplate life's mysteries. It's the ultimate soundtrack for those moments when you find yourself staring wistfully out of a rain-streaked window and wondering where it all went wrong, or more importantly, where you will go. And in a tragic twist of fate in 2013, the band was abducted by two men at gunpoint, beat, and dumped onto the train tracks in Michigan. Two guys grabbed either shoulder and pulled me into like a van. The first thing I was greeted with was a police baton to the face. They smacked my face, and that's why I got all here. Um, I couldn't see out of his eye. This was all swollen here, here, nose laceration, teeth. 
Then I got, I'm not gonna show it because it's gross, but it stitches in here. So the song has heartfelt lyrics and a melodic rock sound. The lyrics tell the story of a person expressing their commitment to be there for a loved one, no matter the circumstances. And the chorus includes the iconic lines, And this song achieved significant commercial success, reaching high chart positions in various countries. It became especially popular in the early 2000s and received widespread radio airplay. The emotional and earnest delivery of Alex Band's vocals contributed to the song's appeal. Despite the success of Wherever You Will Go, the calling faced internal conflicts, leading to a hiatus in the mid 2000s. Although Alex Band pursued a solo career, and the band did reunite in 2010 for a brief period, the impact of Wherever You Will Go endures and the song is often associated with the alternative rock sound of the early 2000s. Next up, we have Deep Blue Something with Breakfast at Tiffany's. It has an infectious chorus and a nod to the classic film. This 1995 gem found its way into our hearts and onto every mixtape of the era. Who knew that a simple mention of a cinematic breakfast could become such a catchy earworm? Well, Deep Blue Something surely did. How'd you do? How'd you do? The song's title and lyrics reference the classic 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's, starring Audrey Hepburn. The lyrics depict a couple facing relationship issues but finding common ground through their shared enjoyment of the movie. The catchy chorus includes the refrain, and I said, what about breakfast to Tiffany? She said, I think I remember the film, and as I recall, I think we both kind of liked it, and I said, well, that's the one thing we got. It received widespread radio airplay and charted internationally, reaching the top 10 in several countries. The song's laid-back and melodic style, along with its nostalgic and romantic theme, resonated with audiences during the mid-1990s. The success of the single helped propel the album home to achieve moderate success. While they couldn't replicate the same level of success, Breakfast at Tiffany's remains a very important track of the mid-1990s rock scene and is often remembered as a nostalgic hit. Fasten your seatbelts because we're cruising into the late 90s with fastballs the way. Just think about it, you're on a road trip, wind in your hair, and this tune's playing on the radio. They made up their minds and they started packing. You can practically smell the nostalgia. Fastball gave us a musical roadmap and we gladly followed along. It's known for its catchy melody, engaging lyrics, and radio-friendly sound. The song tells the story of an elderly couple, Sal and Edith, who go missing during a trip in a Texas town called Amarillo. The lyrics describe their disappearance and the sense of mystery surrounding their fate. That you saw this uh, item on the, uh, on the news about this couple that maybe had Alzheimer's and and they were they they people were looking for them mm -hmm. but that was the the original germ of the yep, song you nailed it that yeah. and in the end it's a marriage of uh -huh. what we rehearsed yeah. all the parts we rehearsed yeah with but playing over this thing well I was about to say the original idea but it wasn't it was actually his demo whatever mm -hmm. it was the, what I thought was super compelling and I think all those elements thrown in uh -huh. It captures a sense of nostalgia and yearning. The chorus includes the memorable line. The 
away, received widespread airplay and became a chart-topping hit, reaching the top of the Billboard Modern Rock tracks and achieving success on other charts as well. And the song got a further boost when it was included in various movies, TV shows, and commercials. Again, they couldn't quite replicate the success of The Way, but this track continues to be remembered fondly for its melody and storytelling. Finally, we're going back to the summer of 1999 with Steal My Sunshine. It's a song by the Canadian alternative rock band Lynn. It became the band's most successful single and a notable hit of the late 1990s. The song is characterized by its upbeat, funky sound and catchy phrase. Steal My Sunshine features a distinctive sample from the Andrea True Connection song, More More More. The lyrics convey a carefree and summer-like vibe, describing moments of joy and optimism. The success of the song was pretty instant, and it reached high positions on various music charts on the Billboard Hot 100, and just as fast as it came in, it left. It's a great song for a sunny day, friends, and rollerblades, and maybe a hidden message in a bottle. And can you believe it's been that long since we were all trying to decode the lyrics and stealing our own sunshine? Though it's a musical roller coaster through the world of one hit wonders that had us singing, dancing, and possibly scratching our heads. Which one of these songs was your ultimate guilty pleasure, or do you have one that I didn't list? Now, if you would like to help support our channel and watch us grow, we do have a Patreon that you can subscribe to for exclusive videos, early access, and other fun treats. It will also give you access to our Discord. However, for the next couple weeks, you can get into the private Discord at no cost. I'll put that link in the description if you want to join and chat about the 1980s and 90s. Until next time, bye friends.